Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're on the chapter of modelling with vectors, so we're going to use vectors to help us work out some problems. So a nice simple one to start with, a girl walks 2 kilometres due east uh, to a fixed point OA and then 3 kilometres due south after that. Find the total distance travelled, well that's just going to be 2 kilometres add 3 kilometres, that's 5 kilometres. Part B is the position vector of B relative to O, so that's just going to be, in terms of I and J, this is 2I minus 3J um, to go down by 3 uh, kilometres. So it's uh, 2I minus 3J, and then in brackets we need kilometres at the end because that's the units that we're working with here. Okay, part C, and this little notation here where we've got vertical brackets either side of the vector OB, is to, find the, is to find the distance between the vector O and B. So uh, what we need to do here, a little bit of Pythagoras' theorem, 2 squared plus 3 squared, square rooted, and we get 3.61. Part D here is to find the bearing of O from, so B from O. So what we've got here is a 90 degree angle here, and we've got to work out this theta part here. And it's just a case of doing some right angled trigonometry stuff. We get 56 degrees here. Adding it on now to the extra 90 degrees that we have round to the north line. Remember, bearings are always from the north line. Uh, we get 146. And bearings are always written to three significant figures. Okay, so the next slightly tougher question here, not involving right angled triangles, is in an orienteering exercise, a cadet leaves the starting point O and walks 15 kilometres on a bearing of 120 degrees to reach A, the first checkpoint. From A, he then walks 9, nine kilometres on a bearing of 20, 240 to the second checkpoint at B. From B, he directly returns to O. Find the position vector of A relative to O, so that will be in terms of I and J. The distance from O to B, the bearing of B from O, and the position vector of B relative to O. So this situation here doesn't make any sense to me until I've drawn myself a diagram. So from O, 120 is their bearing, 15 kilometres to A, and then on a the bearing of 240, which would be the reflex angle, 9 kilometres uh, to the bearing, as uh, to the position B, and then they return straight back to O. So the first question here is find the position of vector rel a of A relative to O. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just picture what's going to happen in the top part of this diagram here, and we're going to draw ourselves a right angled triangle using an east line from the position O and the north line to make that triangle. So given that this east line will form a 90 degrees on the top, the rest of this triangle here will have a 30 degree angle. So now what we've got is an angle inside a triangle and the hypotenuse of the triangle. So we should be able to work out the adjacent side on the triangle and the opposite side on the triangle. So once we've done that, we get 13.0 and 7.5 kilometers on these triangle sides here. So therefore, in terms of I and J and the relative position vector, it's 13.0I, and because it's going down, it's minus 7.5J, and in brackets we need a kilometres on there as well. The next question here for B is to find the distance from O to B. Now what I can see here so far is a length and a length, but none of the angles inside the triangle here so if I can work out this angle here, then I'm bang on for the cosine rule. Let's just imagine that top part of the triangle again. If we have a 30 degree angle here and a right angle here, therefore we definitely have got a 60 degree angle here. And working with angles around a point, therefore this angle inside the triangle here must also be 60 degrees here. So now to use the cosine rule because we've got two sides and the angle in between those sides. So substituting them into the formula, and we get A equals 13.1 kilometres. So the distance from O to B is 13.1. The next question here, the bearing of B from O, 
Okay, let's have a look at the bearing here of B. Well, it's going to be the 120 degrees round to the A line, but a little bit extra as well inside this triangle here. So we need to work out this angle inside the triangle. And given that we've got pairs of opposite sides and angles and a side length opposite this theta here, the sine rule here is going to be perfect to work this out. So given that we need to work out an angle, we put the angle uh, sine bits on the top, substitute the values in. Probably best to use the square root of 171 at this point as it's an exact value and our answer will be more accurate therefore. So we get sine of O equals 0 0.6 roughly, so O equals 36.6 degrees. So now that that angle is 36.6, the bearing is going to be 120, add that 36.6, so we get 157 degrees uh, to three significant figures. The next question D here is find the position vector of B relative to O. So what we'll need here probably is a little right angle triangle so we can help work out some uh, I components and some J components. So given that this line is 13.1 uh, and we've already worked out the bearing to it, the angle round to the south line here is just going to be 180, subtract it. So 24.4 will be the angle inside here. And just as we had done before, if we've got a right angle triangle with an angle and its hypotenuse, using sine and cosine, we should be able to work out the J and the I components so we've got here a south direction of 12.1 kilometers and an easterly direction of 5.1 kilometers. So therefore the position vector is going to be 5.1i and then because it's going south it's negative 12.1j. Okay, so that's the answer to these two questions here. Right, have a go at these two questions here. Pause the video and see how far you get. Right, okay, so question 2a, find the distance moved by the particle that travels for 5 seconds at a rate of 8i plus 6j metres every second. So if it's doing 8i plus 6j every second, then effectively it's moving right by 6, by 8, and then up by 6 every second. If it's doing that for 5 seconds, then it's just going to be 5, lots of the 8i plus 6j vector, so it's going to be 40 add 40i add 30j on this vector here. But now we need the distance moved by the particle, so it's going to be 40 squared add 30 squared, which is 50 kilometers. Okay, so just make sure we put the units on there. Right, question 5. A particle P of mass 0.3 kilograms moves under the action of a single constant force F newtons. The acceleration of P is 5i plus 7j. Find the magnitude of F. So what we need to do here is use the formula of F equals ma. Now the force here is what we need to work out, so we'll leave that F in the formula. The mass of this particle here is 0.3 and the acceleration is 5i plus 7j. Now multiplying this out and we get 1.5i plus 2.1j. However it does say find the magnitude of the force um, F, so what that means is we need to find the total force that's being applied in that direction. So that means a little bit of Pythagoras work required. So what we do is we grab our calculator then and it's the square root of 1.5 squared add 2.1 squared and we get 2.58. So it's 2.58 and the units for force is newtons. So it's 2.58 newtons. Right, thanks very much for watching that video. Make sure you have lots of practice on the questions from exercise 11F and the mixed exercise that comes after it. These questions are quite difficult, so make sure you persevere through them and ask your teacher if you need any help. Thanks very much for watching.